All right. Thank you for your patience. Now, you can see my screen, and this will make way more sense, and I won't hijack any other teacher's Apple TV. The real reason we did this is because I want to see how do you guys search. And if there is one thing we can all agree you should be learning in history class, it's how to look stuff up. Right? Should I go to the library and find a book? Should I go to Wikipedia? Can I trust that source? Should I use a search engine? Should I use my phone? Is there a certain website or tool that's better than another? I didn't care how you did it. Most of you in here, I'm going to guess, use this method. Thumbs up if you Google searched any of those questions. Thumbs up. All right. That's like 90% of us. How many of you use something on your phone that wasn't a Google search? Can I get a thumbs up? A prominent thumbs up. Okay, what did you guys use? Snap AI. AI. Poe. I love it. Two people on the survey yesterday said they used Poe. I'm guessing most of us don't know what that is. Who used something that's not Snap AI, not Poe, and not Google search? Hands that are up. Let me guess. Chat GPT. Did it feel weird using that in a class on purpose and not hiding it? Yes? You can talk. Yes. It felt weird using that in class and not trying to hide it. Okay, well, I just gave you a link to some of those tools yesterday, so of course you could use it. Here's what I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you one way to do this that you may not have known before you walked in today, and then I don't care what you do with it. You can totally disregard it and be like, nope, don't care. Or you can do what I'm going to encourage you to do. Play with it for a week and just try it out. I'm going to take the hardest question on here. Number four was a list of founding members of the League of Nations. Here's what most people do most of the time. Hey, Google, let me paste the exact text of my teacher's question and hit search. And then... Usually click on the first thing that pops up. Not surprisingly, Wikipedia. The purpose of today is not a Wikipedia rant. That'll be later in this class. And then you go to that link, and you get this thing, please donate money. Come on, Jimmy. And then you start scrolling, and you're like, oh, is it this? And you're kind of reading it. I'm not telling you that's a bad way. I'm telling you that's a slow way. And who are you, let, who are you letting rank search results for you. Google, do people pay them to move their website up in the search results? If you don't believe me, do any kind of shopping related search. Sponsored, sponsored, sponsored. That doesn't mean that they're good websites or they even have what you want. It means they paid for people who search for certain words to have Google put them at the top or towards the top. Maybe you trust Google, maybe you don't. Here's what I would do. I would use a tool called Perplexity. You can use it in your browser, or you can use it on your phone. This is what Perplexity looks like. And it looks a little bit different than a Google search. Here's what I want you guys to do. In a new tab, I want you to go to perplexity.ai, which is on the board. I didn't see anybody use this today. I was hoping all of you would, and then I'd be like, all right, I don't need to go on a rant and make a video about how to do this. Has anyone used this before? Look at us learning new stuff. I'm not telling you it's the best. I'm certainly not telling you it's the only way to research. I'm telling you it's worth learning how to use. Like, just try it. Experiment with it. A couple of students had issues signing in with their school Google account. If that happens to you, we'll just have to troubleshoot, or you can try it on your phone if you have your phone. And if you don't, hopefully your neighbor has it working. Many students, even in the year 2024, go, you can do research with AI? I thought I just made up facts. Mm, you can. When I do research, which is literally every day, I use this first. I'm not saying I only use this, but I use it the most, and I use it first. And it's pretty freaking awesome, and I'm glad I played with it, because it's way better than Google search. And for how we're using it, it's way better than ChatGPT right now.
I'm going to give you a prompt, and you can add or change up the prompt however you want. But when you get into perplexity, in the middle of your screen, I'll just do a new chat so mine looks like yours. You basically get a text box. Now, we could just paste in the question from Google Docs. And it would probably do something with it, just like Google Search did. It found the right Wikipedia page. But when you use AI search engines, that's what this is. We can give it more instructions than just search the question. Let's practice that. Here's what I want you guys to type in your search box in perplexity. Let's give it a role and tell it how we want it to act and in what context we want it to help us with this. In school, it's really easy. I'd start with, well, what class are we in right now? Advanced Junior World History. Do you think it would be helpful for the tool if we said, act like an expert in world history class? It's like, oh, I need a historical perspective. So we're going to type this in. Act like an expert in world history. Now we're going to tell it who we are. So we gave it a role. Now who are we? I am a student in world history. Okay, that was not rocket science. We could be a little bit more specific and tell it what is the topic we're trying to research or study today. League of Nations from world history. So maybe I am a student in world history who is studying the League of Nations. You just narrow down of all the stuff on the internet. You want history from a world perspective, in class, you're the teacher, I'm the student, and it's specifically about the League of Nations. Question four was the hardest. Who are the 48 original member states in the League? If you went on Wikipedia, you got 48, and you copied a big table and you pasted them in. Did anyone have a discrepancy with the number, though? And you're like, my source did not say 48. What numbers did you guys get, and what source was it from? 68 from Wikipedia. Okay, 68 from Wikipedia. Who had a different number and a different source? 43 from Snapchat. Oh, my goodness. Really? We're going to trust Snapchat AI to give us factual information about history? It says it's 42. Who had a different one? I had 42. Okay, which is an online encyclopedia, usually considered to be a good source. Any other different ones? Okay, this is what's fun. Instead of just searching the question, let's give it context. Some sources said 42, some said 68, but my teacher says 48. How many original member states were there? And then we can even tell it what format we wanted. And let's say a bulleted list in alphabetical order. Some of you are going, um, this sucks compared to Google search. I just typed in the question from copy and paste. Why would I have to put in like three sentences of context? Because we want to get a more specific, unique answer than just whatever Google serves up. So here's what I'm going to add for context. My teacher says there were 48 founding members of the League of Nations. Can you really play like two AI tools against each other and say, my Snap AI told me this, what do you say to a different AI tool? Of course you can. You can do that with books, right? You can be like, this book said A and this book says B. That's just called corroborating. I'm going to tell it my Snap AI says there were only 42 founding members. Which is correct? And give me a list of those nations in alphabetical order. I like to tell AI, please, so when it takes over the world, it remembers I was always polite to it. It's OK if you're not word for word, but here's what I have so far. Act like an expert in world history. I am a student in world history who is studying the League of Nations. My teacher says there were 48 founding members of the League of Nations. My Snap AI says there were only 42, which is correct. And give me a list of those nations in alphabetical order, please. You have a little switch that says pro, and it lets you do this five times every four hours or something for free. 
use it or don't, you're going to notice the results from this are very different than Google and very different from ChatGPT. The first thing perplexity gives you is a breakdown of steps it went through because that's not just a simple factual answer. I'm going to make that bigger so you can read it. So it's saying, oh, okay, I think this is what you want me to do. Search for the number of founding leagues and confirm it's correct. Give me a list of those in alphabetical order. And it goes, hey, before I answer anything, here's some sources. And it gives you five of them. It goes Wikipedia, Britannica, UN Geneva, the Green Papers, and then another Wikipedia page for the five sources. It gives me some images and maps, some pictures and graphs. And then I scroll down here, and it specifically answers my question. The discrepancy in the number of founding members of the League of Nations, according to the most reliable sources, 42 when convened on January 10th, 1920. Here's a list of those bulleted in alphabetical order. Oh, thank you. Now, can it explain why Snap AI had a different answer than your teacher? This discrepancy in numbers might arise from the different interpretations or counting methods, but the consensus is that there were 42. And it says, here's my source. Now, if we had numbers in the 60s, this source tells us over time there were numbers in the 60s, but not original member states. And on January 10th, 1920, there were only 42. Here's where the discrepancy really came from. Let's see if it can tell us this. I'm going to ask a follow-up question. Why does my teacher say there were 48? And is Snap AI really smarter than my teacher? Because <laughs> your question said 48, right? When I put that on your doc, can it really explain that? Sources first. Oh, OK. Tell me if this is a plausible answer. I'm going to highlight that and zoom in. Additional members joined shortly after the founding. And by December of 1920, six more states joined, bringing the total to 48. Does that sound plausible? Does Wikipedia say, in 1948, it had this number? Sorry, in 1920, it had this number. Well, in January, it was 42. And by the end of the year, it was 48. So yeah, technically, Snapchat was right. And the guy with the history degree who like paid tens of thousands of dollars to go to college for this stuff was not smarter than Snapchat AI. Is that not kind of wild? This is the best part. As for whether Snap AI is smarter than your history teacher, it's not a matter of intelligence, but of access to accurate information. AI systems can make mistakes or have outdated information, just as humans can. Always verify important facts using multiple reliable sources. Now, there are tons of cool things this can do. I like how it suggests these follow-up questions for you that you can just click. But here's maybe my favorite one that Perplexity is good at. Find me a YouTube video that is reliable on the topic of the League of Nations. Because you can go search on YouTube in another tab. But how do you know if it's a legit video? You have to click on it, look at the account, YouTube, YouTube, and you can look at these sources. You can even ask it to summarize a YouTube video and say in two, par two paragraphs, give me the gist of that YouTube video. I'm not saying don't use Google search. I'm saying you should play with this, especially because it's free. And if teachers say AI is cheating, they probably think all AI can do is write your essay for you, and then you just turn it in and take credit for what the AI wrote. Yeah, AI can do that, but it can also do this.